गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स इट्स जनरल कला हियर एंड टुडे वी विल स्टार्ट सेकंड सेक्शन ऑफ आवर चैप्टर नंबर एट व्हिच वाज करंट इलेक्ट्रिसिटी एंड इन फर्स्ट सेक्शन वी हैव स्टडीड सम कॉमन कंसेप्ट्स रिलेटेड विथ एन इलेक्ट्रिक सर्किट दैट मींस अबाउट चार्ज करंट पोटेंशियल ऑल दीज थिंग्स एंड इन फर्स्ट सेक्शन इट सेल्फ वी हैव लर्न दैट इफ वी वॉन्ट ए कंटिन्यूस फ्लो ऑफ करंट इन द सर्किट and if we want our device must work continuously then we will need a cell or battery which will uh, maintain a constant potential difference so in this section we will study about that cell especially the electrolytic cell so our first topic is uh, electromotive force terminal voltage and voltage drop terminal voltage and voltage drop that means this voltage drop is also known as lowest voltage we will start from electromotive force actually any electrolytic cell is made up of an electrolyte which will be filled in a glass vessel just to, to avoid rusting glass vessel and two electrodes will be kept here that means electrodes means two metal plates will be kept here okay so this is electrolyte we know that the function of cell is cell converts chemical energy into electrical energy that means already chemical energy is stored inside the cell okay and when we use it that means when we take make the use of the cell then that same chemical energy converts into electrical energy and our appliance get electricity and it starts working that is the function of an electric cell so here in an electrolytic cell we will have one electrolyte here we have taken electrolyte as h2so4 sulfuric acid and one uh, plate we have taken of zinc and another one we have taken of copper actually you can take any kind of electrodes and you can take any electrolyte but the problem is here one chemical reaction will take place so accordingly we have to arrange all these things instead of h2so4 you can take nacl or anything but it must be an electrolyte please don't take anything okay likewise so here in this example we have taken h2so4 as an electrolyte and then zinc and copper plate this is actually our cell okay and we know that if we want continuous flow of current then we need a constant potential difference here because if there will be difference suppose there are two excess electrons two excess electrons are there because this is negative terminal negative terminal means there are excess of negative charges that means extra electrons this is positive terminal that means there is deficiency of electrons so there are extra two electrons okay one is electron will start moving from here to here and then reached to the second uh, terminal okay then now only one electron is remaining here now this one electron will also move from here to here after that vote after that the number of electrons or the concentration of electrons at both the terminals will become equal so now there will be no flow of electrons and hence there will be no flow of current therefore the conclusion is we need a continuous difference of concentration here in the number of positive and negative ions only in that condition we can maintain a constant flow of current so the same thing we will see here actually this is uh, dilute sulfuric acid so that means water molecules will be here and we know that this h2so4 will dissociates into positive and negative ions you know that hydrogen will have positive ions and so4 will have negative ions okay and two hydrogens positive ions that means actually the electrolyte should be such that it can dissociate into positive and negative ions that's why i said that please take only electrolyte you can change it but don't take anything okay now the next thing is copper and zinc this reaction we have studied in chemistry that means we know that uh, zinc when we, it will react with h2so4 it will uh, make zinc sulfate that's okay that's not our topic that we have already studied in chemistry our topic is this charges this is physics this all is chemistry but this is physics you see here on so4 we are having negative charge 
so the thing is this negative charge will go to this negatively charged sulfate ion will go to zinc plate done and this positively charged hydrogens will go to copper reason you know due to reactivity difference okay so here if this so4 minus will go here what it will try it will try to neutralize its negative charge and to neutralize this negative charge it is having excess number of electrons so it will donate these two electrons if it will donate these electrons then it will become neutral and it will be happy okay that means when this so4 goes to zinc plate it donates this negative charge to zinc plate okay similarly when this hydrogen will go to copper it is having positive charge so it will try to neutralize this positive charge for that what it will do it will take some electrons from copper okay and neutralize itself and obviously that atoms or those atoms which will donate or give the electrons they will acquire positive charge this is only just for one instant after that what happens continuously this h2 many molecules of h2so4 we are having here right okay so these h2so4 these particles will be converting into h plus and so4 minus so this so4 minus will be continuously depositing negative charge on the zinc plate and this hydrogens will be continuously depositing positive charge on the copper plate done now the thing is when this copper plate will get sufficient charge and when this zinc plate will get sufficient uh, some amount of negative charge now this reaction stops because this is positively charged hydrogen when it will go to copper plate here already copper plate is having many excess positive charges so this copper plate will repel this hydrogen they will have repulsion between them so now the hydrogen will not go to copper plate now the copper plate will have only this much positive charges and same thing here this negative charge of zinc will start repelling this negative charge of sulfate ion so this sulfate ion will also not go and react with zinc for some time it will remain here that means now reaction is once reaction starts then when the electrodes will get its positive and negative charges after that for some time until you will use this cell for that particular time the reaction stops because it is having one particular positive charge and it is having one particular negative charge this was not our work okay our work was we wanted to create a potential difference between two electrodes and that we have done that means now we are having two electrodes or terminals one is this terminal one is this terminal on one terminal we are having positive charge and on one terminal we are having negative charge that means our work has been done okay as soon as you will connect it to external circuit that we will do later when you will connect it to the external circuit and you will put any appliance here in that condition the charges of this cell will start decreasing because of these charges only the current is flowing in the circuit that means once let me draw it so uh, these keys and this all you will add i will just add one appliance here and this is our external circuit okay so here we are having excess of negative charge here we are having excess of positive charge same thing the negative charges will move from zinc to copper and hence the current will move from copper to zinc that means your this bulb will glow in this condition right so that means what that means when the current starts moving and when this bulb start consuming the electricity the number of positive and negative ions will start decreasing here okay suppose one negative and suppose initially it was having five negative charges now one has reached from here to here now four then three then two then one like that okay so as soon as the number of charges decreases then this reaction starts again because the repulsion between them will also decrease so the reaction will start again and the charges will be deposited again here that means ultimately this electrolyte will maintain a potential difference between both these electrodes continuously that means they were never become neutral the the charge on them will never become zero because of this electrolyte okay so 
now you forget this external circuit this is just for uh, this concept we were where we were we were here that we have constructed two terminals where we have got the potential difference potential difference and this potential difference between these two terminals is known as emf that is which is denoted by epsilon and it is known as emf right now there is no external circuit okay we are talking only about these electrodes so the potential difference between both these electrons which has been created due to this reaction of these electrodes with electrolyte this potential difference is known as emf electromotive force you know potential difference is also a force which always uh, uh, pushes the electrons to move towards the positive terminal so that is also force and this is also force so we are having one definition of this potential uh, emf that is when no current drawn in the circuit that means this external circuit is not there so we are not taking any current from this cell when we are not drawing any current from the cell that means the actual condition right now is this we are having only one electrode and we are having two uh, electrodes and one electrolyte negative charge and positive charge then the difference between both these terminals potential difference between both these terminals is known as electromotive force so in an open circuit that means when external circuit is not added this is external circuit from here to here so when the external circuit is not added when it is in open circuit then the potential difference between terminals or here you can say electrodes same things between terminals or electrodes of a cell is known as emf this is our one definition okay and now we will come to here that is when you will add this external circuit now you want one bulb to glow with help of this cell okay so you have uh, implemented here one bulb okay and you have uh, whatever you want to arrange a meter volt meter whatever you want to arrange you have arranged so here now it is a closed circuit so now the current will flow through the circuit and the bulb will glow because you know that circuit has been completed and we are having a potential difference also that means if you are having voltage that means your bulb will glow so in that condition the bulb will glow but why this bulb is glowing this bulb is glowing because of your this emf because you are having here a potential difference if you will not have this emf then your bulb will not glow so the another definition of electromotive force is if in a closed circuit closed circuit means when cell is in use in that condition the amount of work done in bringing a unit positive test charge from one point to the same point again after completing in the circuit that means to move a unit positive charge in complete circuit complete circuit means external circuit as well as internal circuit that is known as electromotive force if you remember the definition of potential difference it was also same the amount of work done in bringing a unit test charge okay from one point to another that was the potential difference so here also to uh, bring a unit positive test charge throughout the circuit that means from this point we will start and we will reach back to the same point outside the circuit the direction will be from this terminal to this terminal and inside the circuit the direction will be from here to here this we have already discussed in first section okay so that means we are having one more definition okay of uh, electromotive force okay so that is when in a closed circuit or you can say when cell is in use both are same thing cell will be in use if the circuit is closed then only the current will flow and cell will be in use so you can say when cell is in use or in a closed circuit whatever you want to write so in a closed circuit the amount of work done in bringing a unit test charge throughout the circuit this word is very important here throughout the circuit and here throughout means external circuit plus internal circuit that is known as emf or electromotive force so here we are having two definitions both i hope it's clear to you next thing
since this is potential difference only so the unit that means the SI unit will be volt because for all the voltage the SI unit will be volt and you know what is the interesting thing here we will read three terms electromotive force terminal voltage and voltage drop and these all three are potential difference only no doubt they will have some difference in their definitions and use but still their SI unit will be volt next thing is for measurement to measure it potential difference obviously how will you measure the voltage with the help of voltmeter yes I know and next thing is potentiometer one more new word is given here that is potentiometer okay actually the voltmeter and potentiometer has same difference as your rheostat and resistance box has that means your potentiometer will give you more accurate value than what uh, voltmeter so here you can connect voltmeter if you want and if you want you can connect a potentiometer basically potentiometer is used to measure the voltage if you forget I can write here for you this is used to uh, measure the voltage that means especially to measure the internal resistance how that we will see later what is internal resistance that also we will see later but uh, here you know this is resistance so you know what is resistance okay next thing it is used to uh, compare emf of two or more cells compare the emf that means if you are having this one cell uh, if you will change this electrolyte then your cell will change so if you are having some another cell and if you want to compare which one is having more voltage which one is having less emf so that you can do with the help of potentiometer actually it's uh, just a simple wooden box and some copper plates are inserted there and one wire of alloy that will be uh, placed here and one jockey will be here you know jockey you have studied in real state and with the help of this jockey as you will move around it on these wires you can change resistance and hence the current so likewise but this is not our topic don't worry we have to just remember one this word that is potentiometer potentiometer gives more accurate value than voltmeter it is used to measure the internal resistance voltage and compare the emf okay so now i hope emf that is electromotive forces clear from here formula it is uh, denoted by epsilon and work done per unit charge in bringing a unit test charge throughout the circuit that means in complete circuit outside the circuit and inside the circuit so that is the emf now the terminal voltage and voltage drop which is also known as lost voltage that we will see next class in next video but here i will give some idea so that in next video we will not have to start from zero okay so you see here this complete is emf the reason is because this produced emf is responsible for flow of current throughout the circuit and this potential difference in this external circuit that means if we will leave this area then this external circuit this is your potential difference only which you were using in your uh, that uh, ohm's law so that this potential difference is the terminal voltage Therefore, terminal voltage is the amount of work done in bringing a unit test charge in external circuit only. And this is the external circuit from here to here only. That is known as terminal voltage. And the voltage between both these terminals when your cell is in use, that means when the circuit is closed, this is known as voltage drop. That means that voltage is not useful for our appliance. It is uh, actually uh, we can say wastage, not really wastage because this is responsible for the motion of uh, charges from one terminal to another. But still with this, this voltage is not useful for us in the external circuit. That means our appliance for our appliance, it is not useful for us. So we uh, call is call it as voltage drop or lost voltage lost voltage means not useful okay so that is known as voltage drop in detail we will see the terminal voltage and voltage drop in the next video thank you